you think heaven's like?
A crowd had gathered in Queen Square. They'd assembled to protest against the Booker Prize respectability of major publishing firm Crum and Crud Limited. Numerous eyes gazed uneasily from the windows of Crud House, the company's London HQ. Since the KO Press, Hamish McCain's publishing operation had begun organising demonstrations against the poor quality of British fiction, several buildings had gone up in flames. Hamish, Hamish, I love you, a bird in her mid-twenties yelled as she threw her arms around the anarchist's neck. I used to work as a secretary at Crum and Crud, but I quit after I started reading your list. My name is Lisa O'Brien and I want you to fuck me. McCain made the girl spread her arms against a wall of the Mary Ward Centre. He took a pair of handcuffs from his pocket and slipped them over Lisa's wrist, which was now held directly above her head. Then the young anarchist pulled down O'Brien's leggings so that her ass was exposed to the jeering crowd. He lifted an open palm up into the air, then brought it down against the girl's naked flesh. This was the signal his comrades had been waiting to receive before launching their assault on Crud House. Dozens of windows shattered as bricks and petrol bombs rained against the building. Within a matter of seconds, Crud House had disappeared beneath a sheet of flame. Old farts out, the crowd chanted in unison. We want books full of sex, violence and anarcho-sadism. Not boring literary shit in which nothing happens. Lisa's ass was red from the series of blows Hamish had directed against it. McCain dropped his stay pressed and then spun O'Brien around before forcing the bird onto her knees. Lisa took the anarchist erect cock in her mouth. She was loving every minute of this sex session. Although Lisa had never met Hamish before, everything they were doing together had been arranged in advance through a mutual friend. Crum and crud employees who attempted to flee from their blazing office were subjected to savage beatings by the occupants of Queen Square. Since the police had been privatised, they'd become remarkably slow at answering emergency calls because injuries sustained in violent situations could wreak havoc on the Met's profit rating. The anarchists did as they pleased, securing the knowledge that the cops wouldn't turn up until after they'd absconded from the scene of their present crimes. I don't believe this is happening to me, a commissioning editor wailed as his cheek was sliced open with a Stanley knife. McCain had flung himself against O'Brien like a wolf descending on its prey. Lisa loved the way Hamish batted her twat with his love truncheon. The weight of the anarchists pressing down against her gave the girl a sense of security. In a situation such as this, she knew exactly where to find the boundaries that mark the limits of her being. That feels so good, Lisa squealed. Shut up, bitch, Hamish snarled. O'Brien loved the ritual training of insults during sex, but decided to clam up because she wanted to offer her partner total submission. She recognised the muscle spasms that preceded McCain's orgasm. Split seconds later, her insides were flooded with the anarchist's genetic wealth. Simultaneously, endorphins were sweeping through Lisa's brain. She too had come.
es war nur Ton, fahrender Zug, außen, langsam, bitte nicht kopieren, äh, das Original rausschneiden fürs Archiv. Danke.